Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with another Geography Now video. We're doing a Carib the Caribbean. Uh, explained. Uh, yeah. Uh, Caribbean. Uh, you got, like that, that photo, is, every time I think of the Caribbean, I just think of like beautiful beaches and water and swimming and make cruises, you know, Caribbean cruise. I'd love to go on one. Uh, uh, I think if I ever went to the Caribbean, it probably would be on a cruise. I, I, I'd have no idea where to even, like, visit there. Because <laughs> I'd have no, yeah, no idea where to visit if I were to go to the Caribbean. Because, like, where do you go? Like, where's the best spot to go if you're only going to once, right? Because I do so many countries. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to, you know, visit all of them. But I might be able to, like, visit, like, certain regions. And so I'd have to, like, basically pick out where I'd want to go in that part, you know, of the world. And that's definitely a hard thing to do. So I definitely have to do my research. But you know, obviously, I already got some already in my mind because I've done all these videos and stuff. But anyways, let's jump into the Caribbean Explained. Woohoo! Let's do it. Da -da -da. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Please hit that like and subscribe button below. If you haven't yet, I'd really appreciate it. And three, two, one, bam. Everyone, so I asked you guys on social media what the next Filler Week episode should be. I did a little poll on the two most popular suggestions. On Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, the slight majority on all platforms said they wanted me to do a Filler Week on the Caribbean <laughs> Explained. So here we go. Ah, the Caribbean. Now, culturally speaking, most of these places are very similar. Like, they all celebrate their own version of Carnival. They all love seafood and play their variation of reggae, soccer, and calypso music. They all have, like, the sexiest black people or Creole black people on the planet. Anyway, on the technical side, the Caribbean is made up of thousands of islands, islets, and reefs divided into 34 island entities, 13 of which are fully sovereign nation states, and the rest are overseas regions, territories, dependencies, and commonwealths, or okay. autonomous constituencies that belong to the UK, France, Netherlands, the USA, Venezuela, and Colombia. Generally, if it had to be categorically placed, the Caribbean is considered part of North America, although sometimes others will say it's just kind of its own thing. The island chains are shaped like a hook engulfing the Caribbean Sea, which is on the Caribbean... Yeah, like when I think of North America, I really don't include the Caribbean. You know, I just I kind of just include the big land masses. So yeah, kind of, but because I don't know, I guess it's part of the continent. Apparently, it's, that's what it's part of the, the continent. But anyways, North American ish. So I guess it's uh in that zone where it could be either way, right? I don't know. Own thing. The island chains are shaped like a hook engulfing the Caribbean Sea, which is on the Caribbean plate. And of these islands, there are three main island chains, the Lucayan Archipelago, the Greater Antilles, and the Lesser Antilles. In this video, we'll first go through the fully sovereign states and then the dependencies and territories. Keep in mind, we already did a lot of videos on these, so I encourage you to check out the episodes. Just go watch them. And before we get into it, as you know, I agree. I've done a lot of episodes on these countries, so yeah, definitely check it out. Everything's in... Alphabetical order uh, in a playlist in alphabetical order on Geography Now. Yeah, check out my playlist. Yeah, what he said. But here at Geography Now, we are pretty exclusive with whatever brands we work with. Usually, I only choose brands that I feel my subscribers and I can both enjoy. I actually asked you guys what you thought about this brand, and you said you were okay with it, so we are promoting it. As you know, us dudes here at Geography Now sometimes have facial hair, and sometimes we have to shave our facial hair. And also, we do other things like shower and brush our teeth. These are things you guys do too, right? See, we're on the same page. So far, so good. Well, now that we've established that, it is my honor to say thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. I'm sure many of you guys have already already heard of them, they're pretty popular, no. and for a good reason. <laughs> for one, it's not just shaving products, but all different kinds. They have everything from shower products, oral care, hair care, skin care, all right, guys, I know you're wipes. Not here. They ship right to your home, and for right now, they have a great offer where you can get a starter set for their black... Yeah, I know everyone's not here for this. I can't believe I let it, I can't believe I let it go on that long. I, I don't need that. I, I buy, like, the dollar pack of razors, that the one-time use ones. <laughs> Anyways... Pineapple, Frigate Bird Sanctuary, they have 365 beaches, one for every day of the year. Most of the 93,000 people live on Antigua Island, and only about 2,000 live on Barbuda, the flat marshy island. They also legally own Redonda Island, which has nothing but birds and a small unnamed gecko species on it. The Bahamas, named after the Spanish word Bahamar, meaning shallow sea. This was the first place Christopher Columbus discovered on his voyage to the New World. Yeah. Long story short, because of its location, it's kind of like the Hawaii of the East Coast. This is pretty much where Americans anywhere east of the Mississippi like to go on vacation when they want a tropical island experience. There's so many cruise ships that go here, too many tourist sites like underwater caves, pink sand beaches, fortresses, native Taino sites. There's cool. even an island with swimming pigs that come up to you and ask for food. Barbados! Woo! Ah, geez, Rihanna, you still haven't gone... 
I've done that country and I don't remember the pigs. I feel like I would remember that. Maybe it's just, I've done so many countries that I just forget a lot of stuff. That's cool. Back to me. Barbados is basically the cool oddball flag. of the Caribbean. For one, it's not even located on the trench line, and for some reason, it sits about 100 miles east of their neighbors, which means they are outside of the hurricane zone and they rarely get affected. It was also the only island to have been briefly colonized by the Portuguese, but then they just kind of abandoned it. Known as the Bajan people, they are one of the richest nations in the Caribbean, known for their month-long crop over festival. They love eating flying fish and cuckoo washed down with Mount Gay rum. Pretty good stuff, I've tried it. Kraken will always be my number one though, but Barbados you're doing it right. Cuba, the largest and most populous of the Caribbean nations, but not the most populous island. That belongs to Hispaniola, the name of the island shared with Haiti and the oh, Dominican yeah. Republic. Cuba is, of course, a Spanish-speaking Caribbean nation considered part of Latin America. We all know about the revolution, the Che yeah. Guevara stuff, and how the Marxist-Leninist Communist Party has ruled since the 60s, which led to the tension during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Clearly, it was resolved by the X-Men. No, but seriously, Cuba sticks out much in that they were pretty much isolated for a long time and kind of kept things to themselves. There was a lot of tension against the U.S., Although awkwardly, the U.S. still kind of kept Guantanamo Bay. Aside from all that, though, they have lots of resources and culture. I mean, you can still find the Santeria rituals being performed. Boxing and baseball are huge out here. They love doing the mambo, cha-cha, and bolero, and rumba. Dominica, the quiet bookworm girl. They forgot to talk about, like, doctors and medical because isn't, like, Cuba, like, the big medical, like, when they trade with countries, they just trade a lot of medical supplies and doctors, you know, to those countries. Isn't that like a thing? I remember like every every country had Cuba as like someone they would for medical or whatever it was always from Cuba. Is that right? Am I am I thinking about Cuba the right way or am I thinking about a different country? Pretty sure it was Cuba helping uh, other countries with medical, right? I think so. Mambo, cha-cha, and bolero, and rumba. Dominica, the quiet bookworm girl, youngest sister of the Caribbean. Dominica is probably the most well-kept island in the Caribbean nature-wise, and the government deliberately discourages cool. mass tourism to maintain the beauty. Lots of rare animal species found here, including the national animal, the Cicero parrot, found on the flag, known for their purple feathers. This is a volcanic island, and it is still growing through the geothermal activity. They have the second largest hot spring in the world, Boiling Lake, and they have the Champagne wow. Beach with bubbles coming out of the ground. Dominica also has one of the highest centenarian populations per capita on the planet. Many say it's because of the healthy diet and the happy, carefree atmosphere. Dominican Republic. Dominicans have quite a reputation. First off, they share the island with Haiti, and together the island as a whole has over 20 million people, about twice that of Cuba. The Dominican Republic is, of course, a Spanish-speaking Latin American country, yet for a long time there was a lot of tension between them and the French and Haiti. Haiti even took over for a time, and lots of crazy things happened. For what it's worth, though, Dominicans are definitely known for being some of the best baseball players in the world. It's they, true. along with Chile, are the fastest talkers in the Spanish-speaking world, and many people have trouble understanding them. And there's always, like, this weird rivalry they have with Puerto Rico in, like, everything. Food, dance, sports, who has the best celebrities. Although, let's be real, come on, J-Lo, sorry, Dominican Republic. For what it's worth, though, the majority of the people in the DR are either black or mixed with black, making it the blackest of all the Latin American countries. Uh, what else? They love merengue, uh, bachata, mofongos, and tostones, but don't tell that to the Puerto Ricans. Grenada, the Spice Island. Grenada is... I feel like I'm just going through like a rerun of the country because like, I kind of knew a lot of this stuff through previous geography now videos. So definitely check out those reactions. Like sometimes I want to bring something up as he's talking and I'll wait till after he's finished talking, but he'll bring it up uh, even though he'll bring up the fact that I want that I want to bring up myself. And I'm like, oh, I guess I can't really pause it and talk about that because you already did. But anyways. Oh, the fungos and tostones, but don't tell that to the Puerto Ricans. Grenada, the Spice Island. Grenada is known for two things, being the world's second largest producer of nutmeg after Indonesia, producing about 20% of the world's supply. Not bad for one small little island. They even put it on their flag. And the other one is the Operation Agent Fury invasion in the 80s, which was criticized internationally, but it kind of worked out, and the people of Grenada were, like, kind of okay with it in the end. And yeah, look it up. Grenada is also famous for their interesting Jab Jab Festival, in which people douse themselves in oil and wear horns and dance to a drum. Oh, yeah. Frenzy to express freedom somehow. Haiti, the first black republic in the world, gaining independence from France in 1804. They had a revolution and you know the rest. This place yeah. is stereotypically known as the Voodoo Island, since voodoo is still sometimes practiced here in certain areas. Haiti is also the largest Frank. Yeah, for some reason, I, I, I mean, like I said it nervy, I kind of confused, like, you're going to Hades, you know, as Haiti, but, you know, it's not the same thing, you know, because I was just thinking about voodoo, but apparently it's not the same thing. Anyways. 
the Voodoo Island, since voodoo is still sometimes practiced here in certain areas. Haiti is also the largest Francophone nation and population in the Americas, more than Quebec. It's interesting though, because they made their own Creole the official language and use it in schools, written in street signs, books. It's a separate thing from French. Some say Haiti is one of the most unlucky countries in the Western Hemisphere. Nonetheless, they are also one of the most colorful and distinct in the Caribbean nations with a plethora of Creole dance, music, festivals, and food. Oh man, you gotta try Haitian food. It's so good. Jamaica, the music island. We all know this guy. Not too much I can tell you that you probably don't already know. The birthplace of reggae, yeah, ska, yeah. rock steady, genres that would change the face of music forever. They produce the most, most music, music per capita out of any nation in the world. So many famous Jamaicans too, not just in the music industry. I'm sure you've heard of many of them. In any case, both. Jamaica has its pride, yet its problems, yet overall is probably one of the chillest nations in the Caribbean. Oh, and they have the fastest runners in the world. Now we reach the three yeah. saints. St. Kitts and Nevis, known as the mother colony of the West Indies. This was the first European colonized area in the Caribbean. St. Kitts and Nevis is the smallest sovereign nation in the Western Hemisphere, both in size and population, with only about 55,000 people. Out of all the saints, St. Kitts and Nevis is the most English influenced one, as opposed to the others, which were French. The island was formed by a volcano, and it has one of the shortest isthmuses in the world at the tip of St. Kitts. It's actually a very interesting video, because I had done this, and yeah, definitely, definitely a cool video. You need to check out some of these are smaller geography now uh, countries because they're definitely interesting because obviously the big ones, you kind of know a lot about it already ahead of time, but these small ones, you know, you're going completely blind and they got some neat things. The island was formed by a volcano and it has one of the shortest isthmuses in the world at the tip of St. Kitts. Uh, let's see, they're also famous for the drunk monkeys. Hundreds of years ago, they were brought over from Africa and now they are known for taking the leftover drinks that tourists leave on the beach and they get totally drunk. It's hilarious, look it up. St. Awesome. Lucia, known as the Helen of the West Indies because like Helen of Troy in the Odyssey, the island was fought over between the British and French 14 times. It's like a weird English-French mixed island. Like even though the British got indefinite control in the 19th century, they still retained some of the French influence Everyone speaks both English and Lucian French Creole. Otherwise, it's another volcanic island. Sulphur Springs is the world's only dive-in volcano. Let's see, they love uh, green figs and salt fish. For a small nation, they boast two Nobel laureates. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Like St. Lucia, these islands were also fought relentlessly between the French and English. Finally, Treaty of Versailles, British, you know the deal. The nation is basically one big island where the majority of people live, St. Vincent, which has an active volcano, and 32 smaller islets and keys, many of which are private islands owned by either yeah. companies or people, like yeah. Rustique. Island, it has some weird names of places on it like Gingerbread, Buttercup, Opium, and Macaroni Beach. It's one of the few yeah. Caribbean countries with petroglyphs recording ancestry that can be found in these towns. And finally, Trinidad and Tobago, the last of the twin island countries. This island nation has switched between the hands of different European colonizers more than any other island nation in the Caribbean. Started out Spanish, then it became French, British, Dutch, and then yes, even Corlander, which is like a fancy ancient term for Lithuanian. Yeah, Lithuania, once under the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, took over Tobago for a short period. Of time. Compared to the other states, Trinidad has a very industrialized economy rooted in manufacturing and petroleum. Yes, they have huh. oil and gas reserves. They even have a few skyscrapers built in their downtown area district. Very diverse population wise, about two thirds are black or mixed with black, and the majority of the rest are Indian, like from India, which makes about a fifth of the population <laughs> Hindu, which plays a strong role in the national festivals and holidays. Otherwise, uh, yeah, what else? Uh, Nicki Minaj. And now we reach the overseas territories and dependencies and constituencies and so on. Now for the UK, they have five islands, all of which are are pretty much tax havens. First, we have Anguilla. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Named after the Spanish word for eel because the islands are kind of shaped like an eel. Only about 14,000 people and there's goats everywhere for some reason and uh, Chuck Norris lived there once. Virgin Islands. Why? This used to be a huge pirate hangout and uh, today you might be able to find some buried treasure. When Richard Branson named his company after this place because he loved it so much. He spends about half the year on Nectar Island. Cayman Islands. Supposedly this was the birthplace. Yeah, I remember I actually seen a video on, I think it, was, it might have been YouTube I actually watched a video on, kind of shows this whole set up you know his, he has like owned his own island his whole setup and the people that live there it was definitely interesting and weird he loved it so much he spends about half the year on nectar island cayman islands supposedly this was the birthplace of scuba diving really cool turtles which is where it got its name from and yeah probably the biggest tax haven island of them all montserrat this island had a huge volcanic eruption in 1995 that effectively shut down like half of the entire island and wow. burned down the old capital you can still see the old ruins today and it's kind of interesting turks and caicos huh. this is like bahamas little brother that ended up staying with the uk and at one point it almost joined canada and could have been like canada's hawaii no one knows exactly oh, how they got their on. names Something about cactus look. Man, I wish that would have happened. That would have been great.
That would have been great. Canada, and could have been like Canada's Hawaii. No one knows exactly how they got their name. Something about cactus looking like a Turkish hat. I don't know. Yeah. They have one of the largest barrier reefs in the world. And they also play this thing called ripsaw music with a handsaw scraped with a knife. On a little extra credit, Bermuda is not technically the Caribbean. It's in the Atlantic, but it is a UK overseas territory. Although sometimes the people of Bermuda classify themselves as Caribbean. Eh. And now the French islands. Guadeloupe and Martinique. These are regions of France and they hold the exact same status and legislative power as the regions of Europe. European France. They are part of their Eurozone and speak French and Creole. They are like the Hawaii's of France. Both have active volcanoes. One on Martinique killed lots of people in 1902. Beautiful landscape. Guadeloupe has disputably the highest waterfall in the Caribbean. Saint Bartholomew. So this cool. used to be part of Guadeloupe, but it broke off in 2003, and now it's just a French collectivity. This is an interesting one because it was the only island colonized by the Swedish for a significant amount of time. And you can even see the symbolism in their coat of arms with the three crowns. And finally, Saint Martin. This is also a collectivity like Saint Bartholomew, and it's like the weird northern conjoined twin of the Dutch St. Martin that shares the same name on the same island. It's basically a resort what? town and tropical getaway spot with a cool lagoon. Which brings us to the Dutch islands. First off, the ABC islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. Two of them are considered constituent countries within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Aruba and Curaçao. However, Bonaire voted to have closer ties and is considered a special municipality. All three speak Dutch, although English is widely known and taught. They were once known as the land of giants as the natives were kind of supposedly really tall. They have interesting traditional indigenous sites and petroglyphs and cacti. Otherwise, yeah, you see a very distinct Dutch style in their architecture and very colorful buildings on all three of them. Then we get to the SSS Islands, Saba, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin. Saba is a special municipality. It is basically just a jutting volcano potentially still active, and it is the least populated out of all the Caribbean units with only about 2,000 people. It also has the shortest wow. airport runway in the world. St. Eustatius is also a special municipality. It's also very small, and at one point they had a huge Jewish population. You can still see the walls of the former synagogue and Jewish cemetery. And finally, St. Martin oh, is yeah. considered a constituent country like Aruba and Curaçao. They also have that weird Princess Juliana airport with planes that get really close to the beach and people go under it. And now the South. Yeah, I've seen so many videos. I was like, like now I know where, uh, which island it is. Like, I was just, I don't know, where, I just seen a lot of YouTube videos of people on the beach with their cameras and just watching the planes go over their head. It's really neat to see. And it's like, that's gotta be scary because one of those guys, you know, pilots are off, you know, but you're gonna get wiped out there, but anyways. South American islands, Venezuela operates the federal dependencies of Venezuela, a chain of about 600 offshore islands and islets only populated by about 2,200 people, most of whom are on the largest island, La Tortuga. These islands are also important not only in giving Venezuela an extended economic zone, but also maintaining their offshore oil deposits. And for Colombia, they administer the San Andres, Providencia, and La Catalina Archipelago Islands, confusingly closer to Nicaragua, but nope, they took over them. San Andres is the more popular one, it has a cool resort, and the culture centers, the the native inhabitants. Interestingly enough though, they have a flag that basically is the same as Scotland's, just a lighter blue hue. Finally, the islands administered okay. by the USA. You have three of them, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and Navassa Island. The Virgin Islands are classified as an unincorporated organized territory of the USA. They were for the longest time actually colonized by Denmark until they were sold to the US back in 1916. Today, they are known for the huh. pristine tourist sites and beaches that people like to have weddings on. Puerto Rico is classified as an unincorporated territory to the United States and is the largest of all the territories both in area and population wise at over 3 million. Puerto Rico is very complicated because in almost every right, they are pretty much like their own country with incredibly high self-administration and autonomy. They mostly speak Spanish as their first language, English as a second one. They are US citizens and can move about the US with no problem, which is probably why there are actually more Puerto Rican people living in the US than there are in Puerto Rico. This sense. is a very unique topic. Maybe I should just make a whole separate filler week video on it. I don't know. And finally, the disputed, but mostly US held island of Navassa Island. This has no Nobody on it, no harbors, no airstrips, only a lighthouse. And since it has become a wildlife refuge, it has been closed off to visitors unless you get a permit okay. from the Fish and Wildlife Office in Bocaron, Puerto Rico. And that's just about it. Pretty much everything in the Caribbean. You have 13 countries, 21 overseas entities of other countries, and a few hurricanes and earthquakes, but nothing can stop that warm tropical joy. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Well, that was definitely fast, interesting, but I, I knew so that's a lot of that stuff I actually knew because I've done videos a lot of that stuff and so a lot of it kind of came to like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah because it you know it's just for me for some reason a lot of that's kind of still fresh in my head and some of that stuff and then there was also some also some stuff where I'm like do I know that already <laughs> and don't want to be like oh yeah that's cool and then you guys be like uh, you just did a video on that and you kind of said the same thing, <laughs> which I'm sure is probably already happened anyway, because I may be forgetful. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe. 
hello I'll let me know what you think of the caribbean if you if you visited there you know where you recommend in the entire caribbean to, maybe where you visiting caribbean if you visited more than one place let me know uh, where you'd uh, recommend i guess it would depend on what you're going to the caribbean to kind of visit you know what you're kind of looking for to, to see kind of thing but i don't know like and subscribe all that fun stuff catch you guys in future videos you guys are amazing you have a great evening or great day whatever time it is you're watching and peace catch you guys in future videos man Woohoo!